Oh, kitten's out there. He desperately wants to come in. <laughs> Poor sad miracle kitten. Okay. So, uh, we went out trapping it today. Um, in one of our managed feral colonies. And um, because we've been trying to get a specific cat named Chloe, who showed up in January, the end of January, and um, looked pregnant. And then um, we tried to trap her, couldn't trap her, because she's super skittish and trap shy. And then she didn't look pregnant, so we assumed she had kittens somewhere. And then she just showed up again looking pregnant. So we don't know 100% that it's a girl even, or that she's pregnant, but um, that's what I'm about to find out. I'm going to talk quietly, hopefully you guys can hear me, but, um, trying to keep it as low stress as possible for her. and just do a very limited intake exam um, to confirm, first of all, that she's a girl. See if I can tell if she's pregnant. Um, treat ear mites, fleas, and uh, worms. Um, possibly vaccinate with a killed virus. Um, that would be um, safe, safer for the kittens. Um, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see about that one. But, um, and just kind of get as much of a, an idea for her health and any potential issues um, as possible. And then we'll just go from there. So I'm not gonna stay too long because I don't want to stress her out too much, but she's been quite calm in the transfer cage, which is good. Um, if you want to see the video of her being trapped, it's posted on our Facebook page, our Tiny Kittens Facebook page which is tinykittens.com slash, I mean, sorry, facebook.com slash tinykittens. <laughs> so anyway, um, oh, I should do this so that you can find this. There it is. Oh, look, there's the nest cam. We don't need that at the moment. socialize them um, and adopt them out. Um, so I'm just getting her wrapped in the towel. Um, the most important thing is getting her face covered. <laughs> She's got it wedged right up there in the corner. But as long as you have the face covered, then um, you're pretty safe. so smart and she does not want to come out. I'm just going to uncover the back a little bit so I can there. I'm trying not to manhandle them. 
too much. important to take your time with this part because if you don't get a good wrap then they uh, can escape and then you lose your best your best lose stress opportunity to get a, get a quick exam. Oh, there. face out uh, until until I have until I need to just because I want her to feel more comfortable and um, once they're once they can see what's going on they typically try to make a run for it so just making sure she can breathe but is also pretty secure Boy feral cat pee has a distinct odor to it, you guys. It's like it's very distinct. It's very stinky. Okay, so I'm trying to talk quietly. Um, I'm just gonna feel for testicles first. You know, we hardly know each other. She's got a good privacy tail there. Oh, no testicles. Okay, so this is definitely a girl. Which is what we thought. So, um, here's her. Let's see. There we go. Here's her belly. So the goal is just to assess her general condition. Um, make sure if there's anything crazy going on, we get her treated. Her belly's definitely big. She's not going to appreciate this, but I'm just, I need to get it sort of under here. Okay, and I'm cute. You have to make sure that her little snout doesn't get out of that crack. I know, little monkey. She sounds a little wheezy. We've had a couple of cats with upper airway disease. I'm just trying to get a feel for if I can feel kittens. I can feel like skulls, things like that, um, would be helpful to know kind of how far along she might be. Body condition is good. Her poop feels good. Hmm. I don't. Feel, I have. I didn't feel any like super distinct kitten shapes from that angle, but she's also pretty scrunched up. Um, there's her kidney. Alright, 
so I'm not going to do too much poking and prodding. Um, I don't, I don't feel obvious. Oh, she's less scrunched on this side. Then. You're like, oh, such a good girl, so brave. So this is, this is pretty typical of um, the feral cats that we bring in and handle. She's um, not fighting me um, because she's scared and she's waiting for an opportunity. So if her little snout came out a little bit here, she would take off. But um, because I have her face covered, she's, um, she's being very uh, cautious. So I'm going to take this opportunity to give her some revolution, which will treat ear mites roundworms and fleas uh, and lice, cough people, I guess, um, which we've had some feline lice from this colony. Um, I'm not strong enough to do that. Oh no, don't make a run for it. It's not the end of the world if she makes a run for it, but I would like to be able to leave her be once once I get done with intake stuff and then let her hopefully settle into her nest and then I can we can observe and see what she looks like and um, we'll try to get her booked for or we'll see if Dr. F can maybe come out. I'm not sure. Dr. F's on vacation at the moment. Well deserved vacation, so um I'm not sure we will do there, but let's figure something out. So I'm just putting, this is just liquid that goes on the back of her head so she doesn't lick it off. And that will treat a bunch of stuff. Um, and then I would like to check her ears. I'm just, um, Considering whether I want to, I think I'm going to hold off on uh, vaccinating her with anything just to observe and see um, how she does and, and um, if it looks like she is pregnant, then we would use a killed vaccine um, and we typically, you know, might not do that for all pregnant cats, but um, the cats in this colony have a particularly virulent strain of Kalichi virus and we've had um, kittens born with like urinary tract infections and upper respiratory infections like before their eyes are even open there's pus coming out so we um, vaccinating has helped really the pregnant moms has really helped um, lessen the symptoms they still get it but the symptoms are better so I'm just cutting a little hole in this towel um, just a little access hole so that I can get one ear out. Of course, that was not like the best placement because, oh, look, there's one little eyeball. Here, give me your little ninja paw. She's got a good, good grip on it. What a good girl. You're being very brave. There's her snout. I just want your ear. There it is. So now I can just get a, I'm just gonna take a quick peek in the ears, try to probably clean them up a little bit. And she's less likely to make a run for it, although this hole is kind of, I did a bad job um, cutting it sort of toward the edge of the thing. Uh, and then also, Let's do this. 
And also, you guys know what it's time for. charging this for like a week or so I thought but it's completely dead oh it's so sad okay anyway fine we'll do it the, we'll do it the old fashioned way you're alright um okay so I just want to make sure that there's not anything crazy going on in there and often we find that the ferals, um, this feels good to them, so it gives them a little bit of a positive interaction with us. Because they almost always have ear mites and whatnot. Her ears are, are not bad at all. A little itchy though. Sometimes we, we rub them and they like it. You can see that feels good. She's really leaning in. So that must feel good to her. Oh yeah, that feels good. Good job. That's nice, huh? Let's see if anything came loose. Nope. Okay, pretty good. Now we'll do oh see, look how that so this hole was really like poor planning on my part because look how there's like no yeah one eyeball i would really like to look at your teeth too but i think that's pushing it a little bit i'm gonna make a better hole that hole is too risky at this point um, but I definitely can't rule it out so we'll see we'll see what she looks like she may not uh, she may just I'm gonna put her in the nest when I'm done um, so that that becomes her sort of safe place and then um, we'll be able to watch and see the cameras are a huge help in the sort of monitoring and figuring out um, you know, how they're settling in and, you know, if there's anything going on and especially when we don't know about pregnancy, we'll learn, learn some things by watching what she looks like. That's itchy too. Oh, it's so itchy. Here, I'm giving you a little rub. They're, these, her ears are not too bad, but, but definitely itchy. So um, we've had treatment for ear mites. And again, she's leaning into my ear rubs, which is cool. Okay. Now, so that's the important stuff. Um, we don't have to rename her, that's good. Because she's a girl. She's, she's actually like got her whole head laying on my hand right now. Like pushing into my hand. Which is a good sign for this stage because um, like if they're super shut down, they don't, they won't respond. Like, you can trigger their scratching reflex if they have bad ear mites, but they don't usually, like, really lean into it. You can see she was bracing herself with her cute little foot. So that's a, that's a good sign that she's not so completely stressed that, um, she's, she's completely shut down. But she, I mean, she is shut down, but not, um, not extraordinarily so, which is good. So I'm just going to move this. This is a special nest prototype. 
that um, we use for feral cats. It's got a, a guillotine back door, escape door, so that um, we can either trap them in if we need to catch them and give them meds or something um, in a very low stress way, or when there are kittens, um, we wait till mom leaves and then put the door down so we can come in and access the kittens without stressing mom out too much. So it's been very effective way to uh, manage pregnant and injured feral cats. So, um, I don't, I should have brought the scale down, but I wasn't quite that smart. She does have big feet. She does, she's a pretty substantial cat, so she might just be fat. But um, she definitely looked pregnant in uh, January and then didn't look pregnant. And now she was looking pregnant again, so um, it's very likely that she is, but we don't know. we're going to wait and find out. Um, her, her nipples feel like they've been used before. Unlike Riska, who has the tiniest little nipples. But she's not not lactating, which is good because, um, having been, so one of the sad, the sad realities of feral cats is that when they're not spayed and neutered, they get, their biological mandate is to reproduce as much as possible. And so, um, this is her second pregnancy this year, if she's pregnant, um, this kitten season, which just started. Um, and something would have happened to her entire first litter of kittens, whether they didn't survive birth or um, didn't survive shortly after she would have, just based on the timing, um, she would have gone back into heat probably within two weeks of giving birth or whenever, whatever happened with her pregnancy. Because we know approximately when that was, and that was about seven weeks ago, and if she's showing, um, she'll be at least, you know, five or six weeks along. So, just seeing if I can feel anything, because she's, she's, um, her respiration's good, like, typically, some of the more stressed ferals we've had in, um, their respiration gets really fast, sometimes they will even pant. Hers is fast, but it's not, um, it's not uh, extraordinarily fast. I'm just trying to feel, I mean, there's definitely a bulge here, but um, if she was within maybe two weeks of giving birth, um, I would be, I would expect to feel little skulls and elbows floating around in there. Um, unless she only ha unless she only has like one or two or three kittens in there, then she could hide, hide them eas more easily. And I'm not getting like a really good feel because she's really scrunched up, so I don't have a lot of space between her rib cage and her hip bones. But I have I don't feel any obvious kitten lumps, but I think we'll see more when she is in the nest and sort of or she may come out and explore. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out what kind of feral she is when she when she when I leave her alone and um We'll see if she comes out to explore, or if she just hides for a while. Um, now I'm gonna really tempt fate and see if I can just get a little peek at her teeth. Because you know that I can't leave well enough alone. And she's been very good. Mm, great girl. I just want to see if you have like... Mm, old lady teeth? Well, I don't know. Those are just... Probably just feral cat... Feral cat teeth versus old lady teeth. But if only my headlamp was working. Oh, those, that's some, that's some old lady business back there for sure. Well, for a feral cat, I'm just going to enlarge my hole a tiny bit because not only is it dark, I'm keeping my finger between her and the scissors at all times, obviously. I don't want to hurt her in case she were to make a sudden movement or something. We have a lot of stomatitis in this colony. Really bad 
teeth and gums. Um, so I just wanted, that's what I'm checking for because she's being so good. Oh yeah, you're gonna need a dental. That's good, you'll get fixed up. Or you'll get a nice spay and a dental no matter what. And if you're preggles, you'll get to have your babies in a safe place where nothing bad will happen to them. You're a good girl. Okay. So again, this is, people are always shocked to see how easy, how easily we're able to handle the ferals, but um, there's a way to do it. Not, not all of them are this easy, but most of them are. Um, which is very good. Okay, so I think I've learned everything I need to learn at this point. So um, now I'm going to relocate her to the nest. I think you'll get, we have, ca I have cameras in there, so you'll, we'll, and, and I'm assuming she might stay in there first. So I'm gonna put a little food in. So she's not a regular to the feeding station. She's just started coming in January, the end of January. Um, so she doesn't really know us, and um, we don't know a lot about her personality except that she's been very skittish. So. Um, at, at the feeding station and that she's very trap smart so um, maybe she'll you know best case scenario she'll be like a sky or a riska or a starling um, but whatever happens we will we will figure it out so I'm just gonna put her and her little snacks oh. compared to Riska. So a little snacks in here. Um, a little bit of, I don't know, I don't want to just spill all this. I'm going to put some water in here too. Maybe I'll put this at the edge so it doesn't spill. Okay, and then Thank you. 